Hey everybody, Pastor Mark here coming to you from central Wisconsin. This video is for February 19th, 2023. I'm here at St. Luke and St. John Lutheran Churches and I thank you for taking some time to watch this. Please read the scriptures on the slide previous and then let's talk about it. So, two things that you should know. First of all, one, I got some laryngitis going right now, okay? So I'm gonna make this video even briefer than I normally do. And with that in mind, I encourage you again to, to read the passages for this week. They all connect really well together. Um, but the three readings, uh, go through them slowly and carefully and see, spend a little time to see how they do in fact connect with one another. The, the similarities between the Old Testament what's happening there in that scene, and then the gospel reading, what happens in that scene. And then what Peter, in the second reading, what he has to say about it, because he was there in that gospel reading, too, seeing it. And that's the second thing I want to share with you, is notice Peter's comment in the epistle lesson. Okay, you have the, <clears throat> the transfiguration, that is, Jesus is transfigured, he's changed in front of three of his disciples, Peter, James, and John. And it says that he, he's like glowing. He's shining brightly. It's just incredible light. And then you have the, these two other people, Moses and Elijah, that show up. Um, it's just this amazing, glorious scene. And it's scary. And yes, you would be scared too if, if you were there watching it. Uh, the disciples are terrified, understandably so. But it's glorious. They get a glimpse of who Jesus is fully. That is, he is God in the flesh. And they're seeing that glorious uh, person right there in front of them. And in the epistle lesson, Peter talks about that. And he says, uh, he received honor and glory from God the Father. And the voice was borne to him by the majestic glory. This is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. And he says, we ourselves heard this very vo voice born from heaven, for we were with him on the holy mountain. Earlier, Peter says, we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. So, Peter here is saying, first-hand account, I was there. I saw it. Which is typically the strongest evidence you can have to prove something, right? You know, like in a court case, if you have an eyewitness, someone who's right there can describe it, tell you what happened, I was there, I saw it firsthand, I didn't hear it from somebody else, got it myself because I witnessed it. That's, yeah, that's really strong evidence. And Peter was one of those that was there, that he got to see it. But here's the interesting thing he then says, after all of that, you know, we were eyewitnesses, um, <clears throat> we ourselves heard the voice and so forth. And then he says, we have something more sure, the prophetic word. In other words, he's saying, okay, I saw it firsthand and I can tell you that truthfully. But even more than that, you can trust God's word on this. Even if you're not, not going to trust mine, you can trust what God has to say about this. And then he says, uh, we have something more sure, the prophetic word, to which you will, you will do well to pay attention as a lamp shining in a dark place. What he's saying is if you look at God's prophecies in the Old Testament, if you look at God's word, you will see Jesus there. You will see the promises that God made about saving his people, about saving us with, with uh, the sacrifice and, and the resurrection and so forth. All of that is fulfilled in Jesus. Peter says, I saw the glory of God in Jesus on that mountain. And Peter saw a whole lot of other things too, amazing things. But he says, even if you're not going to trust me, believe God's word because it all says it too. It all points to Jesus and he fulfills it all. And that's incredible. That, that's amazing because it's once again affirmation that we can trust what God's, words, what God's word tells us. We can believe it. We can live confidently in it. We, we can know that when God says, for instance, in Romans 8, all things will work out for good for those who love Christ, that is going to happen for us. And when Jesus says, I will be with you always, that's the truth. We can trust that. 
And when it says in the Bible that God's spirit dwells within us, Paul says, you are a temple of the Holy Spirit. We can know that that's true. And when it says that we will live with our God forever because of Jesus' death and resurrection, because of the forgiveness of sins he won for us, and the gift of life eternal that he gives to us, we can know that is all true. And so we can live in that confidence. We can live gloriously as God's people, shining as a light in, uh, of Christ in this world. And we can have that assurance from his word, from the testimony given by those who were with him when, when these things happened, and by the spirit, his spirit, that dwells within us. So I hope you will enjoy the idea that God came in the flesh in Jesus Christ, that he showed himself to be God in the flesh in so many different ways, and that he is with you always. In Jesus' name, amen. Now may the peace of God, which passes all human understanding, keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Once again, my friends, thank you for watching. I hope you could hear me during this whole thing, as you can hear my voice is disappearing quickly here. So again, I'm grateful to you for spending some time. I pray that God will bless this time. Spend some time in his word, and you will indeed be blessed. That's his promise, and as we know, we can believe God's word. Peace, my friends. Enjoy this week, knowing God is with you always.